Hello, my little Christmas elves. It's me, Heather, here at Goldstone Books. Today, I'm going to tell you my favorite Christmas story. It's called Cobweb Christmas, and it's adapted from a story by Shirley Climo. But in order to tell this story, I need some help from some little friends. Say hello to my little friends. Are you ready? Are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then let's begin. Once upon a Christmas time, long ago in Germany, there lived a little old woman. She was so tiny, she needed a step stool to climb into bed. And she was so old, she couldn't count all the Christmases she'd seen. All the children in the village loved her and called her Tante, which means auntie in German. Now Tante lived in a small cottage beside a great pine forest. The cottage was tiny, <laughs> but then so was Tante. It was the perfect size for her, with one room, one door, and one window. It was all she needed for herself, her dog, and her cat. Tante loved the wildlife that lived in the forest. Birds and squirrels and rabbits and foxes all clustered around her cottage. She fed them all, and they were so tame, they would eat out of her hands. With all the animals around, the cottage was never tidy. But that didn't bother Tante. A little fur, a little feathers, some cobwebs. It didn't matter to her. Except for once a year, when the days grew short and the nights grew long. Then the old woman would nod her head and say, Time to clean for Christmas. And she would shake out the quilt, wash the window, polish the pots and the pans, get on her hands and knees and scrub the floor, stand on the step stool with the broom, and clear away all the cobwebs. Every spider and wisp of web was swept out the door. When every crack and crevice of the cottage was clean, the old woman would nod to herself and say, Time to fetch Christmas. Then Tante would get her sled and pull it behind her as she walked through the great pine forest looking for the perfect Christmas tree. Too tall, she said of this one. Too crooked, she said of that one. Too wide and bushy, she said of another. Finally, Tante found the perfect Christmas tree. It was as straight as an arrow and not too tall, not too wide, not too bushy. In fact, it was the same size as Tante herself. This little tree would like to come home for Christmas and so it shall. And she bobbed a little curtsy. Then she took out her ax and chopped down the tree, making sure to leave a few boughs so that the tree could grow back again. Then she loaded it onto the sled and carried it home. When she put the tree in the little cottage, it fit as snugly as if it had sprouted there. It was perfect. Then the old woman rubbed her hands together and said, time to make Christmas. And she began to bake. She baked gingerbread boys and gingerbread girls, almond cookies that look like the moon, cinnamon cookies that look like stars, she sprinkled them with sugar and hung them on the tree and they looked as if they had fallen from the frosty sky. Then she polished red apples until they gleamed like glass and hung them on the tree. When the decorating was done, she started on the presents. There was a bone for the dog and catnip for the cat. She made a garland of nuts for the squirrels and a wreath of seeds for the birds. She left offerings of food for all the other animals. There was something for everyone, except for the spiders, for remember, they had been brushed away. When all the decorating and the presents were done, then the old woman hugged herself and said, time to share Christmas. Every year, the children of the village all came to Tante's little cottage. Oh, Tante, they cried, it's the most beautiful tree in the world. I wonder if it tastes as good as it looks, laughed the little old woman. When every crumb of cookie had been eaten and every bite of gingerbread gobbled up, all the children went home to sleep and wait for Father Christmas. Then Tante invited the animals in. The dog and the cat and the shy wild creatures all crept into the cottage to see the Christmas tree. There was something for everyone and they were all there except 
were the spiders. For remember, best beloved, they had been brushed away. <sighs> that night, Tanta sighed. She was happy, but she was also a little bit sad because nobody could give Tanta what she really wanted for Christmas. What she really wanted was a little bit of Christmas magic. She had heard tell that amazing magical things happened on Christmas Eve. The rooster might crow at midnight, animals might speak, bees might hum Christmas carols. She longed to see some Christmas magic, <sighs> but she supposed she never would. <sighs> Poor Tonto was tired after all the cooking and cleaning. She sat down in her rocking chair, crossed her arms and said, Time to wait for Christmas. And she fell fast asleep. She was sleeping so deeply that she never heard the little animals outside calling for her. Oh, Tonto, Tonto, please let us in. Please let us in. We want to share Christmas. But somebody heard. Father Christmas was passing by, and he saw all the spiders outside. Oh, Father Christmas, please let us in. We want to share Christmas. We want to see Tanta's tree. And Father Christmas laughed. What harm could it do? And so he opened Tanta's door, and big spiders, small spiders, hairy spiders, smooth spiders, Black and red and brown spiders all came creeping, crawling, sneaking, softly, scurrying, hurrying, zigging, zagging into the old woman's cottage. They looked up at the tree. Oh, it was beautiful. The curious spiders were so excited, they ran up and down and all over the tree. Everywhere they went, they left a trail of silk behind them. When they had explored the tree from top to bottom, they were so happy, their joy complete, they scuttled away. When Father Christmas returned, he saw that Tanta's tree was covered in cobwebs. He knew how hard the old woman had worked, and he knew how upset she would be when she saw her tree. But he didn't blame the spiders, <laughs> because that's just what little curious spiders do. So he decided to give Tanta some Christmas magic. Father Christmas gently reached out his hands and touched the spider web, which began to gleam like gold and sparkle like silver. The next day when the old woman woke up, she couldn't believe her eyes. She rubbed them and said, it's a Christmas miracle. Quickly, she jumped on her little step stool to get a better look. At the top of the tree was a tiny spider spinning its web. Oh, so it's the spiders that I have to thank for this Christmas miracle. Every Christmas after that, Tanta didn't clean quite so carefully. She always left a few cobwebs in the corners so that the spiders could enjoy Christmas too. And every year after she finished hanging the gingerbread and the cookies and the apples on the tree, she covered the tree with tinsel, which made it gleam like gold and sparkle like silver, just like it did on that magical cobweb Christmas, and just like we still do today. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas, my little elves. Stay safe.